Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez, and today I'm gonna to show you how I would do the retouching method of dodge and burn in Lightroom only. I know that there are some photographers out there who are a little intimidated by Photoshop and only use Lightroom or something else similar to Lightroom. So I wanted to show you guys how I would do the dodge and burn with just that program. I will be leaving a link to the photo that I'm gonna be working on in today's video, this image here on the screen of Sarah from 2019. So in case you guys want a photo to work on and edit with me in this video, then you can download that photo in the description area below. If you could give this video a quick like right now, that would be really appreciated. And also let me know in the comment section below how much retouching you do to your images. Do you use dodge and burn? Do you use frequency separation or anything else that I might've forgotten? And while you're typing away, I'll let you guys know about today's sponsor, which is Adorama. Adorama is an industry leading retailer that has been serving photography, videography, and audio customers for almost 50 years now. Their motto is everyone is a creator and you do their best to unleash that creator within us all by providing us with the tools and expertise necessary to get the job done. I personally shop at Adorama for both the great deals and products I use and recommend, but also the great customer service on those products as well. If you find yourself interested in any product that I talk about in today's video, check out the links that will be in the description area below and be sure to use those links if you decide to order. Okay, so here is the image on the screen of Sarah. I showed you guys the retouch version earlier, but this one is unretouched and I want to make sure that you guys are in the correct mode, the module that you are in Lightroom. So we're going to be in the develop module. And now that you're there, I'm going to just minimize that part there to make the image a little bit bigger. And before we start Dodge and Burn, I wanna quickly show you guys the behind the scenes. So that is right here, the Explorer 400 Pro with the Glow 34 inch beauty dish. And it was at a very low output of I believe one thirty second output. So that could have been taken with a speed light. Here is the photo without any flash firing, just in case you guys are curious how that looked like. But now that you guys see that, let's go ahead and start doing the Dodge and Burn. Actually, I lied. I wanna make a few minor adjustments. So I do want to raise the saturation all the way on the bottom, the calibration section section, blue primary saturation slider. I'm gonna raise that to like 80. A lot more saturation now, but there's too much in the oranges. So I am gonna add a little bit of sharpening here. I'm gonna add it to 60. And then in the HSL saturation orange slider, I'm gonna reduce it to like maybe negative 18. Negative 18 seems pretty good. And the last thing I'll do is change the color temperature to 5800. And that's pretty good. I think we're good here. If anything, I might add a tiny bit of exposure to like 0.4. Okay, that's pretty bright. But it's pretty bright right now. But usually what I'll do is I'll raise the exposure a little bit, then turn down the highlights and the whites, specifically the whites first and I'll go to negative 40. That actually looks pretty good there, but I'm gonna go to ne negative 15 in the highlights and now it looks good to me. So I'll show you guys the before and after. Here's the before, here's the after. When it comes to doing Dodge and Burn in Lightroom, you are gonna be using the masking section mainly. So that's gonna be Shift W on PC. On Mac, it might be something like Alt W. I'll throw it on the screen right now. So go ahead and just click on that little circle there and it will start to try to find people in the photos. So it might slow down your computer a little bit if it's an old computer, but hopefully it avoids that. The important thing that we're gonna be working with today is gonna to be the brush. So you can click on the brush here and then it'll show a little square here that's gonna show the masking, everything that we're painting and adjusting to this photo. And this plus right here is gonna be where we add more brushes because there aren't layers like there are in Photoshop. So we're gonna add our own version of layers here in Lightroom by using the different uh, pluses and adding more brushes and it'll just kind of create their own layers. They'll be stacked up on each other and you'll see that in a second. Right now, I do feel like there could be a bump exposure in the upper part of her face. So like lips up. So now I will probably go to maybe 0.6. I think that's a good starting point. And then I'm gonna click on the photo and actually, I just did a minor click, so there is a brush right now, but you can see that my settings here for the brush is gonna be feather 100, flow and density at 60. And now I'm gonna just increase the size of the brush. For me, that's gonna be the scroll on my mouse that increases and decreases the size of the brush. And I do typically just change the size of the brush whenever I'm doing dodge and burn. I try to keep it very specific to the areas that I want to paint in. So right now I'll just paint on this upper portion of the face and a little bit of the under lid of the hat and let's see how this looks like right now. So I'm gonna just click on this and it'll show you everything in red what you painted, but I like to just delete it so I can see exactly how it looks like. So that's the before and that's the after. And I do like it. So now I'm gonna continue. I'll click the plus again, go to brush. And now I will scan the image and see if there's any areas that I want to really affect. So right now what I'm seeing is that it is a little bright in this area here. So I might get a little bit of darkness. Um, I'm gonna increase the size of the brush and then paint on this area right here, trying to avoid the areas that are dark already and just kind of get those areas that are bright, like from the strap to the lower part of the shirt right here and a little bit above like the top elbow 
or shoulder. And now I think I can see exactly what I painted over. And I'm gonna see if I can just lower this a little bit. I think maybe negative eight is too far. I'm gonna go to like negative 0.5. So let's see how that looks like. And let's see the before and after. So this is gonna be the after, before, and then the after. I'll get one more brush and add a little bit more brightness on just the entirety of the face. So let's just see right here. I'm gonna just paint like that maybe a little bit lower into the neck area. And you guys can see everything that I just painted right here. And I will just raise it up a little bit to maybe 0.25. And now what I'm seeing is I do wanna make the eyes a little bit brighter. So again, like I said before, I'm gonna click on the plus, click on brush, but this time I will hold down the space on the keyboard and click on the image and it zooms it in. And now I'll just start to just paint a little bit in the eye. I'm gonna to try to be very quick about it. And then I'm gonna see what I painted with the brush, maybe a little bit more in this eye, and then see what I painted. I think I missed a little bit on the top part of the eye here. And now that the eye is highlighted, just the eye, I'm gonna increase the brush now and paint a little bit more around the eye like this, just a couple of different strokes around the eye. So you can see kind of blends it in. So I'm just do one more real quickly right there and then do the same thing for the right eye. And now I think I just do a little bit more on this eye right here like this. And now that I have it blended a little bit more, I'll zoom out and then I'll just increase the size of, or not the size, but increase the exposure. And then I think right here at 0.3, maybe 0 0.4, 0 0.4, I think it's a good level. So I'll show you guys the before and after, of course. So here's the before and here's the after. And you know what? Let's just make it a little bit brighter. Make the eyes a little bit more poppy. So let's go to 0.6 or maybe I'm at 0.8. No, 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 0.6 was good. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it at 0.6. And then again, same thing as always, I'm gonna get the plus, go to brush, and then I'll add a little bit of extra brightness on this lower part of the arm because I feel like it's a little too dark. So I will just brush really quickly right here. And this is pretty much exactly what I wanted to paint. Maybe if anything, just a little bit of extra around the arms. It is okay to kind of just bleed a little bit on the background. But right now I will increase the exposure just a little bit and see how that looks like. At 0.7, it looks pretty good. And like I said before, I did paint a little bit over right there. So I'm gonna click O so you can see exactly where I painted over into the background. But let's say for example, that you wanted to delete certain areas that you painted over. So if you wanted to do that, you're gonna hold down Alt on the keyboard. I'm not sure what it is for Mac again. And then you can just increase the size of the brush and then just paint off the red or not the red, but the area that you painted over. And then that basically erases what you painted. The last thing that I want to do to this photo is going to be what we've been doing so far has been called global dodge and burn, which is like dodge and burn from like a zoomed out version. But when you really zoom in and try to remove things like the eye bags, that's going to be micro dodge and burn. So I'm going to click on the image and now I'm going to work on just the eye bags and other imperfections that I might see on the skin that I want to remove. I'm not sure how I exited the masking section, but I'm going to click that again, click the plus and then go to brush. And this time I will add the exposure adjustment first. And I'm gonna go to maybe point, maybe point 0.8. And I'm also gonna change the flow to maybe 30, maybe it should be less, but let's say 20 actually, and go to 20 on both of those. So 20 flow and density. And then I'm gonna take one last scan of the image and see exactly where I want to paint. And it's gonna be these darker areas underneath the eyes. Yeah, the eye bags. And I'm gonna just increase and decrease the size of the brush. And you can actually zoom in a little bit more so I like to zoom in way too much. So I'm gonna click on, I think it's control plus and then just move around. I'm holding space to move around, clicking and dragging. And now I'm just gonna just paint in those areas that I want to increase or actually not increase, but remove. Now probably fast forward to this part of the image or video. I do wanna show you guys what I've done so far when it comes to the eye bags. So let me show you guys the before and after. So here is the after and here is the before. Before and after. I think after that, I think I'm pretty much good for this. If anything, I might add a little bit more exposure to the, just immediately like the forehead right there because I feel it's a little too dark. So again, plus brush and then paint the area that you want selected or to adjusted, or you can make the adjustment first and then paint the area so you can see exactly what you're doing in real time. One last before and after. And actually, you know what I do now that I'm seeing like the nose here, it is a little bright. So if anything, I want to tone that down a little bit. So here I am zoomed, get one last plus, go to brush. And so far, I think we've been dodging everything because there's a lot of darkness in this image. So with this highlight, I'm actually going to be doing the burn part of dodge and burn. And what I'm really going to focus on is just those highlights in the nose. So I'm going to just focus on that. I do feel like the flow and density is a little too low at 20. So I'm going to increase it to 30 so I can see it a little bit better, a little bit faster. 
And here is going to be the before of those highlighted areas on the nose and above the lip. And then here's the after. And I, sorry, I keep lying to you guys. I'm going to add one last brush. And that's going to just be to fix the highlight on the nose because it's like bright right there and then dark and then bright and then dark again. So I'm going to just fix that and then I should finally be done. One last zoom in and you know, actually it was a little better to see zoomed out. So maybe I'm going to just zoom in and then just make those a little bit of my, you know, control minus zooms out. And I do want to make the exposure maybe like 0.2 or two actually. Here is the before and here is the after. And now when I zoom out, I can show you guys the before and after of the entire dodge and burn. So here's going to be the before, here's the after, before and the after. And I'll actually show you guys on the screen right now, the before and after of just the dodge and burn part. And that's pretty much it for this video. If I were to do everything that I want to do in terms of dodge and burn to this photo, then it would be a lengthy video. So if you guys would actually want to see that, then let me know. But that's pretty much it. That's everything that I would basically do in terms of dodge and burn when it comes to just editing the photo in only Lightroom. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something. I do want to thank Adorama for sponsoring this video because when they do that, it allows me to keep making free content for you guys. So definitely check them out. Take care guys, and I'll see you in the very next video.